So, just a quick introduction. Um, this is the woman that made it all possible today um, for hooking up with my dad 50 years ago. <laughs> this is my mom. She serves as security, so if anybody gets out of relationship, <laughs> she will come flying across there, but I try to keep the problem. If you see me point, I point your direction, it's going to be a problem, okay? Okay. How did everybody feel about the sample? Did everybody have a chance to have theirs? Yes. Okay, now don't be ashamed if you just got here and you need to come and get it. We'll stare at you uncomfortably until you get it. <laughs> We're good? Okay. So what we're learning how to make today, I believe is entitled sesame noodle chicken or something of that. You will not see me measure anything because I don't cook like that. But it's written out for you, so please don't blast me on social media for not measuring. I'm a chef, not a baker. Okay? And I hear somebody's going to blast me because you guys aren't even responding. <laughs> so this is Paige. A lot of you guys know Paige from Twinsburg Library. She's a mascot and she is an attention, you know. She wants to be a parent, she wants to learn how to cook, so we're going to share this moment with her. This is also my electric skillet I'm using today. Usually, I would have a much more professional tools, but I had to borrow this because I have a daughter, an adult daughter, and so when she moves, my things move. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's how we're doing today. So the first thing I want to let you guys know is that the meal that you had today was around 420 to 480 calories, just depending on how my scooping measurements went. Um, we used a rice noodle, which I'm going to pass around the audience. This little sweater is just, let's just turn that I'm using rice noodles. How many of you have visited an Asian market, like an authentic, no one will help me because no one speaks English <laughs> Asian market? Okay. I love those. And I love to ask them questions. And then they'll just be like, no, go ask him. Well, which him would you prefer me ask? Because I don't know, can I get a name, blue shirt, anything that they leave you? So I have learned how to use Asian cuisine all on my own through trial and error. A lot of error. I'm going to let you guys pass these around because they are not open. Don't open them, because you look like the type that You can kind of see what they look like. I prefer using these because they don't have a lot of preservatives in them. And you can use them in cool water or warm water. Just soak them in a bowl for two minutes, and they are ready. And they come out with the consistency of them. I lost my noodles. Have you heard that before? This is the power of television. And they're best. But they come out this consistency. OK? So you can use them cold, you can use them hot, and they'll be just fine. So we're going to start out, let's prep our chicken first. So again, that adult daughter, Woo, she brought me the Japanese steel for Christmas. I love that thing. <laughs> Another thing I'll tell you about our cooking lesson today is it's going to be interactive. So if I see you looking less than entertained, you're definitely going to be my target. But I want you to talk to me, because I don't like speeches, and I don't like boring people, and I don't like talking about myself, because you see there's a lot I can talk about. <laughs> we don't want to hear that all day. So on your recipe, I don't believe that there's a measurement for olive oil. Can someone confirm that from the recipe card? Correct. 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 That's because you use as much or as little as you want to. You can use Pam. You can use <coughs> canola oil. You can use whatever oil you choose. I'm an olive oil girl just because I like a good healthy fat when I'm cooking. Now the only things that I don't suggest you use, how many people in here are guilty of like, can't believe it's not butter? Come on. There's somebody. I stalked you. Yeah, I saw that hand. <laughs> um, I feel like this. We all grew up on butter. I'm 50. I grew up on butter. South Carolina over there, we definitely grew up on butter. <laughs> when butter goes into your body, it's butter. And your lungs and your stomach are like, hey, that's butter. Ooh, we're not supposed to have that, but it's good. And then when it parts ways with you, it's still butter. When you eat, I can't believe it's not butter. It goes in, then it stops. And it's like, I don't know what I am because I have 52,000 ingredients in me. I'm not sure where to go. I'm going to leave some in her eyeball, some in her armpit. You know, and then I might just do a little kickboxing session and you don't know why you don't feel quite good or you're dizzy. Believe it's not butter. Okay? I say, if you need butter, if you need a little butter, just watch how much you use. If you need a little sugar, we all grew up on Domino's. Who grew up on raw sugar when they were little? <laughs> when you were little, knock it off. 
Look at that yellow sweater back there, like, not me. <laughs> so what I do for the millionaire children that I work with, I roast them. I roast tons of vegetables, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, all the stinky ones, all the good ones, and I puree them. And I put them in the burgers and meatloaf and um, sauces and the smoothies and brownies. Oh my goodness, I have to tell you the uh, laxative brownie story. But anyway, <laughs> so I do all these things and that's how I had to kind of train Baker into eating healthy with the illusion of eating bad. So remember earlier today I said we're gonna cook bad good today. So you don't have to just eat kale, although it's delicious, but you don't just have to eat kale with no dressing to be healthy. And some days you need to throw in a chocolate donut with sprinkles. Not that I do that. <laughs> but it's, it's muscle confusion. Like, you know how if you're working out and you keep doing the same thing every day and first you're just burning off a pound, you're looking good. Then you walk by the mirror and get back on that scale again. It looks like, ow, oh, do I still weigh the same my weight two weeks ago? And they're just like, forget it. I might as well go and get a Whopper with cheese because I'm losing weight. Don't do that. You need to switch it up and do something different. It's called muscle confusion. So I'm using the same thing when I'm cooking. Just call it eating confusion. So four clean days he gives me. Now we do it by the book, some vegan food that he never even knows is vegan. So I'm a So, and then three days on the weekend, do what you want. The thing of it is, during those four days, you've eaten the correct portion, you've eaten the correct things, you can't even do what you want. You think you're about to go ham on a dozen donuts. You know how I keep referencing donuts? You know? <laughs> I love donuts. So if you ever want me to do anything for you, make there be donuts. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, you think you're about to just eat a bunch of bad food, but you won't. Your stomach has adjusted to this new way of life in just four days. And so although you may have a donut, now me, I can still have three because my mind is programmed to eat those donuts I've been waiting. But I won't be able to have the normal seven. <laughs> so I'm saying everything in moderation. Okay, so while our chicken was cooking, and if you guys weren't at my home, I mean here, see, I think I'm at home. I'd already be done. So we have, does anybody know this big white cabbages? Have you seen it before? Napa. Napa. Napa, yeah. So, again, an Asian market product, because at the Asian market, this is 59 cents a pound. At Whole Foods, this is $4.99 a pound. That's, that's what I said. Also, with things like aloe vera, with a southern mother, stick some aloe vera on you in a minute and just heal all your, like, you broke your arm, then put some aloe vera on you. <laughs> but you can get a slab of it at the Asian market for one dollar. Go on to Whole Foods and get one for $17.99. I, they have gentrified vegetables. They made them fashionable and cool. So now Napa cabbage, it is cool. And it costs a lot. So I would trade right to 30 is in pain and go to the Asian market, which I absolutely love, where I get no help, mind you, so I found this myself. <laughs> and I got the Napa cabbage. So Napa cabbage is something that's featured in a lot of stir fries and things like that in Asian culture, which I love it because it doesn't bear the empty calories like um, iceberg lettuce. How many still eat iceberg? Megan, knock it off. <laughs> that's my friend, Megan. She was gonna do a poem for us, but she forgot the words. <laughs> fired before she's hired. <laughs> okay, so with the Napa cabbage, I always peel off the first few layers. Everybody still with me? Anybody have yeah. questions so far? Because you can just stick that hand up and just ask me anything. I thought she stuck her hand up, she played me. <laughs> Where, did you say Where did you say you bought it that it was cheap? Where did you say you bought it that it was cheap? Um, the Asian market, it's on 30th and Payne. I know you guys are just over and outside of town all the time. And it's called um, Park to Shop. It's between Payne and Superior. And they're, like in that Asian plaza, there are a ton of grocery stores over there that you can literally go and get everything you need for a little or nothing. It makes no sense. Do you have to use the one in Miles? No. So I am a West Side Clevelander, really close to the Shoreway. Mm -hmm. So I just zip right over yeah, there. Free, there's one at Miles in, War in uh, Northfield. Okay. And oh, yeah, yeah, that big one. That so I go to Party so Party over yeah. there when I'm renting things, but well, no, I have not been in that one. Yeah, it's true. It's Ma'am, did you raise your hand? I was just going to tell you, Cam's in Northfield. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, Thank you. Can you guys hear me in the back? Okay. So, here we go with this. Now, I did slice this for you last night with my new steel. Guys, I was so happy. I'm telling you, Mom, was I not happy when I got this knife for Christmas? First of all, because you think about the little toothless wonder that was running around your house for all those years, thought that much to like spend her cold hard cash on some, because they're not cheap. I was so excited. <laughs> then she bought me like Game of Thrones glasses. Anybody watch Game of Thrones? Is it just me? Oh my goodness, people. <laughs> anyway and then my favorite perfume like it's like yeah and you figure out you must have done something right so we do like a nice I am so funny that's why I set the second bowl out okay so <laughs> that's okay listen I work for athletes who never have a pot a pan or anything I can do this so here we are with our nice sliced lettuce okay any questions about the Napa no all right April yes what kind of knife, knife is that Knife? So this is a shun Japanese cutlery. Shun, shun, S H U N. Okay. It's for professional chefs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see how I just I feel full when I pick it up. Something. I automatically just go into I feel Japanese like I will. <laughs> when I put it down, I'm back. I get a little arrogant with it. Let me tell you something about chefs too. Before I take this baby on the road, I'll be wrapping the tape in, with hot pink uh, Hello Kitty tape on the handle. Chef steal. Chef are thieves. I don't care how much money you make, my Simon, you will catch him walking away with your Hello Kitty knife and be like, hi, excuse me, Michael, hi, thanks for doing the event today with Chassie. Um, is that my knife? <laughs> <laughs> Your 5,000 restaurants and 40 TV shows for her. Give me my knife. It's like part of my retirement fund now. <laughs> okay. So there we have red cabbage. Now yours was chopped in the food processor yesterday because, hey, that's how it goes sometimes. Okay. Isn't that beautiful? So guess how much that cabbage cost me yesterday? I want to guess. Free. No, I don't need anything free. I can't wait till I get to that celebrity and people start sending me stuff. Like somebody sent me like a paperwork to be a brand ambassador for their product, and then they were charging me to do it. I said, I'm not there yet. I'm not doing it. No. So 389 because I had to get it from a regular grocery store. Exact. That was my face. That was my face. So I sliced it in the food processor because I did have um, security with me yesterday, and she was talking. <laughs> Got behind in my time, and I was like, oh my god, let me just chop the rest of these in the processor with my mom. <laughs> hey, boo. <laughs> <laughs> so you're Julian, and then you see with using something like this, you can cut off just as much as you need. Like, if you want to make some for lunch, if you want to make some for dinner. Now, mind you, all of this stuff, these lettuces and cabbages can go right into the pan. You can serve this hot, you can serve it cold, it can be room temperature. You also don't have to use chicken, shrimp, steak, vegetarian, anything you want to do, and you can switch up these vegetables. But only a slave to the recipe because I'm not. Because clearly, I could not tell you to save myself one measurement on there. But I have all the ingredients. Okay, so we have, next, our carrots, which went through what? And today I have the power of TV and my friend right here. I'll be chopping. Now, wasn't it nicer to have the small pieces than this? You know, it'll stretch. It goes farther. If that's okay for you, I don't mind doing this. Yeah. Make sure you have her name, Julia. Got me slicing baby carrots. Not been a chef for 20 years. <laughs> Big chunk in there because I just got my nails done and I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> now we also have some dried cranberries. I put dried cranberries in everything. For one thing, ta-da, they're natural laxative just like raisins. If you get them and they're not craisins. There you go. So you can go to like Lucky's or Whole Foods. You know how you like DIY your own granola? I pack this section when I'm going to get some donuts. And they have them, they have them in the bowl. 
bulk dispensers, and you can get craisins. You just have to read that little label and see if they have sugar or not. Okay, and then some have like agave sweetener in them or something like that. So it just depends on the store and how fancy they get. You can also find a giant eagle market district that will get real specific. They charge like $899 per pound for everything there. Okay. Did you guys ever go there? But the donuts are something. <laughs> you will not forget that about me, and I wish it was a joke. It's not. I love donuts. I wonder why. So where do you get the sugar-free printers? Um, these I got from Lucky's Market on um, what's that? Yes, on Clifton. Mm -hmm. So we have a little red onion. Is that cool? Red onion? Yes. All right. Just check it. Call me out on that uh, garlic. Okay. Don't want any more problems. Oh, I don't want you guys to miss this. Wait. Japanese steel. Oh, okay. oh did I get emotional? <laughs> okay. So that's enough because we may have to talk to her later. So all that going on there. Look at that. Rachel Ray could never pull this off. She'd be like, production, can you bring me a bowl? No, we don't have another bowl. <laughs> I looked at the one that I had, and the other one had something marinated, marinating in it, and I was like, ah, oh, I don't want to wash that. And then I had a plastic one, and I was like, ah, oh, that doesn't match. Take your clear one. And I'm like, but you need two bowls. And then my dog was sitting there in, in the doorway, and he's like, you don't need two bowls, just take one. And I'm like, you're right. <laughs> and I got one. And it was clear, and I'm like, I can put this stuff in here, and they can see the layers. Well, you can't. Not yet. But you will. So we have our napa cabbage, our red cabbage, our red onions, and our carrots all chopped up. So I think we are done there. We have our chicken in there, who's just waiting, because he's about to act a fool. You saw that. The next thing that we're going to start doing is our sauce. Now, this is called thin soy sauce. Very different from the sodium, low sodium soy sauce, but this is their healthiest version of soy sauce. Please don't ask me why. No one will help me any further than that. This is what we got. So it's called thin. It has a, a Buddha, and he looks thin on here. <laughs> so, and he looks young. He looks like, if you guys ever saw that, what was that Eddie Murphy movie with the little... Chinese boy in the cage. See, I'm really 50. <laughs> the golden child. He looks like the cage. Did you guys know that that was a girl? It wasn't even a boy. I know. I just saw her on social media because I'm always up in the middle of the night. Can you tell me a lot of energy? <laughs> and it was like the anniversary of the movie and they were together and it was a whole girl. She's so cute. But yeah, so anyway, golden child in the cage. Very little thin soy sauce person. Okay. So. We add, what is the brand? Um, it, the brand is Healthy Boy Brand. <laughs> I didn't even read that. That is hysterical. So Healthy Boy Brand. And let's use that much. So with the sesame oil, Julia called me out one day. She sent me an email. She's like, hi. I know you're a chef and everything. That's, see, she's laughing because she knows she did this. She <laughs> said, I know you're a chef and everything, but you didn't put in the how to use the soy sauce. I mean, the sesame oil. And so after I read her email and I showed my dog, and he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, well, some people are allergic to sesame seeds <clears throat> and sesame oil. And then some people don't like the pungent taste of it because it can be very strong if you don't know how to use it. Now, I did use a light amount in your food, but sesame oil is something that, especially if you haven't used it before, use less first. Because if you put a bunch in there, your food is gonna taste like old man hair. <laughs> now, normally, I don't eat old man's hair. <laughs> but I can say, let's say burnt hair, because I have turned my flat irons up too high before. Have we all done that? So that smell, that taste, it's in a bottle. <laughs> that was your warning. He's looking at me like, what do you mean? I know, I haven't eaten that hair before. <laughs> so that's it, okay? Did anyone have like an overly saturated sesame oil flavor or? Okay. She said no in her fancy scarf, so I'm taking her word for it. Doesn't matter what you guys thought. All right. Garlic would go in here, but it's not. <laughs> okay? Use your garlic at home, but not at her home. You also 
also have some honey. Yes. And we're gonna use that much. You guys have actual measurements on your recipes. I just don't cook like that. If I do it, I feel weird and I'm like I'm not very chefy. And so here's a ginger. Now you can use fresh ginger and you can peel it and chop it up real fine. And congratulations if you have time like that. I don't. I buy ginger paste. You guys have all seen this in the produce section. So when I tell you, first of all, it smells heavenly. It doesn't turn into dry, whatever that thing is, a ginger is on your cabinet. It's fantastic. And then you just, you use a, I know, it's been a while. You just use a bloop. So I'll give you another one. So that's the measurement that you use a ginger for, if you forget your recipes. And then we add some sesame seeds. Sesame seeds are just festive to me. I love using them. I toss them all in your stuff, in your dressing and everything. Now, I also brought adobo seasoning. Have you guys ever used this before? I use it all the time. Doesn't that have garlic in it? I'm not going to use it. Call me for Adobo is a very good seasoning you can use on your chicken. That's what I would have seasoned the chicken with, okay? However, I knew it had garlic in it, <laughs> so she beat me to the punch. But I would have added some of this. It's low sodium, like 350 milligrams of sodium in it. Yes. What is it? Adobo. You get it in the international section, like when you're feeling festive in the grocery store. <laughs> Go down the international aisle with the ramen. A-D-O-B-O? -O? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's excellent on pork. It's very good on chicken. Thank you, Megan. OK, then we're whisking. We're making this lovely dressing. OK? Now what I'm going to do the magic of television since this one, mom, like your thing is like, what are you cooking here? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this sucker got hot and unfortunately hot. So we're gonna take our chicken out. I'm gonna do a smaller chop on that. Any questions? Ask me while I'm having these little commercial breaks. I have a question. <laughs> yes. You know, on this recipe it says half a cup of pan brown sugar, half a cup of honey. That sounds like Really, really sweet. So, but you didn't do that. No, I didn't. I didn't even put the brown sugar in there. Just no. the thing. I told you I don't measure stuff. Okay. So, and would you like the brown sugar in yours, sister? No. Sure? See, <laughs> I did that on purpose. So I did. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna just throw our noodles in here. Just heat them up. See, you can sure it's a little different. We're gonna make sure it's a little more. But yeah, you can. Um, I say that amount because everybody is not going to pre-mix. And then you can have it. Like, what's this system making a tiny bit of sauce for me? Then you can have it. You can freeze it. You can use it for different things. So you're going to make a lot of sauce. Here's a little chatter going on over there. Oh. Can you hear? She can't hear me? Yeah. Yeah, just raise your hand and say, girl, turn it up. I got you. Okay. <laughs> So one of the things you'll also see on your recipe card is that it said hollowed out oranges. Now there's your serving tip, ladies. And gentlemen, if you happen to get in trouble, is it Dave, is it? Yeah. yeah. So Dave doesn't listen. Let's just start there. <laughs> I met Dave earlier today and he just doesn't listen. So when you guys get in trouble, you have to do something fancy. If you don't want to hire me, you totally can. I'll come and make dinner and she'll be all happy and forget that you like mowed down her mother's rose bush that's been in the yard for 40 years. <laughs> yes, that happened. So, um, take a hollowed out orange cup. Now, when you're entertaining a brunch, a baby shower, your, your mother-in-law stopped by, and you just want to be like, see, I'm cooking for him. He's okay. <laughs> How about an orange? And put this mixture in there mm -hmm. and serve it. Mm-hmm. You'll be looking all fancy. she be like, oh my God, Mary is finally catching on to all those things I taught her. <laughs> is that how mother-in-laws are? I don't have one. <laughs> I kind of don't have time to date. Can you tell? <laughs> okay. So we are going to throw, I'm going to give you all of that because you're kind of tiny when you look this way. Gosh, you guys are so quiet. What? We okay? Yeah. You still enjoying me? Yes. I know, I'm having a blast. Hey, we have a stupid question back here. How do I you love them. About an orange? Huh? Yeah, I think a lot of people are wondering how you, how you hollow out an orange. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. I wish I would have brought an orange. Yeah. I, I don't eat often, so I did have one, but then last <laughs> night, and there's no damn donuts because I'm doing a dang fast, so it was orange. Okay. 
So you slice it in half, and then you get a, um, like a teaspoon. And you go around the sides, and you pull it out, and you eat it. Yeah. And you just pull out the filling. That's all. Yeah, hollow it out. Now, if you don't remember how to do that, when you just hire me. <laughs> I top it with some of the sauce, and then I'm going to do a little rough chop with some of this chicken. This chicken is big. I love to have things all mixed in together. Like the way your chicken was minced up in there, I'd rather have that any day than like a big chunk of meat. Because meat and I are, we're okay sometimes, but then like all I have to do is like run through Instagram and see a baby cow, and I'm just like, oh no, I can't. And then the next day, <laughs> yeah. Alright, so we got the chicken in there. So if someone would cut up the whole lettuce and cabbage, how many people would that serve? If you bread it through the food processor, you can do 80. Okay. Because wow, I used long. one, one of each yesterday for you guys. And so you see how much we have. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So that was, I did the I chopped the lettuce with a knife, the napa cabbage, and then the red cabbage and everything else went through the food processor. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, the emerald lagasse. Bam! <laughs> I love him. Okay. And then, to make you not feel left out, first I'm going to change my gloves. And to make you not feel left out, she's not listening at all. <laughs> but if I said garlic, she'd be like, what? <laughs> So I see you use the garlic in the jar. So that's that's good enough instead of fresh garlic? Listen, so you can take this any way you want it to go. If you want to be all fresh, I want to do realistic things. For people who are got these Samsonites under their eyes like me and need to feed somebody at home. Uh, that's why I said you can grab a rotisserie chicken. You don't have to take it this far. You can grab a rotisserie chicken, pre-chopped cabbage, shredded carrots, which you all would have had, mind you, had they not been out at the store. Let's be clear. <laughs> <laughs> you can get your minced garlic. You can buy some and slow roast it and then invite me to eat, you know? <laughs> but yeah, you can, it can be as quick or as tedious as you want it to be. Just the choice is yours. But yeah, minced garlic is good enough. I wouldn't give you anything I wouldn't give Baker, girl. <laughs> <laughs> her up and then these if you guys are familiar with Dean Supply which is also where is Dean Supply? No. 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 Oh back in the day when have you been there? Oh it's been gone a long time. It's on Wood Hill or Woodland or something like that. I'm good with directions. Like I can get there but I can't tell you how to get there. Yeah so that's me. Oh also I don't like sports. <laughs> at all. Like, let me tell you what I do with the clients. When I get them, they'll call, like, let's give Emily. Emily texts me one day. She's like, hi, this is Emily Mayfield. And I'm thinking, congratulations. I show my dog, we're giggling. He's like, who's that? <laughs> and then she's like, Baker's wife. I'm like, it sounds familiar. Like, what is <laughs> So then, my usual go to is to text my brother, but my best friend happened to call in. She's a huge sports fan. I guess you're like, girl, stop talking over my food. Hold on, let me get <clears throat> And she's like, yeah, he's our quarterback and blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh my God, is that the one that I, oh my God, you guys have to just excuse me. We're family here, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I thought Baker was black this whole time. <laughs> I thought Kevin Love was black too. <laughs> let me tell you why though. <laughs> let me explain. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Baker was black because did you guys see when he first got here? He was doing that dance and he was on that. I saw it from the back. So I'm like, this guy likes little buns and thighs. <laughs> Baker is white. Shocker. And then Kevin Love, because when Kevin Love first got here, first of all, I thought he played football. And then. He was on, um, all oh, the black girls loved him, and everybody was on his guy. Da -da -da -da. Kevin Love's so fine. Da -da -da. Love and I see him, I'm just like, yeah, he's fine. He's white. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am the worst of sports. My family, huge sports 
people, sports fanatic, like in my whole career, like one time I got an, um, an invite from Bo Jackson to come to Chicago. He does like this huge golf charity thing every year. And so I was like, Bo Jackson, like, I thought he was dead. And I was like, no, this is me. Sports, just I can't. So I called my brother and I said, hey, I said, I got an email and I think it's like a spam thing because I think this person is dead. I'm like, is Bo, like it's Bo Diddley or something like that. I said, a jazz musician, right? He's like 500 years old, of course he's dead. So my brother's like, hey, do you mean Bo Jack? And I'm like, oh my God, yeah, should I, like, is that a real person? He's like, you can't be that stupid. <laughs> I said, well, I can. And you've known me at this point for like 40 years, so please help me. And he's like, oh my God. And he told me like all these things that he did, like he did a lot of stuff, right? We look the same on paper. <laughs> okay. So I go to Chicago and I go, they had like a meet and greet. So I'm cute. I'm thinking like, yeah, athletes. And you know, then I was like, I'm a 40 year old weight and I was cute and I'm ready. I go to the thing and I'm tooling around. And I was like, wow, I should probably meet him before this. So I can be like, hey, I'm your featured chef and you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm listening and I'm just like, I Googled him, but yeah. So I go and I start asking people like, hi, um, do you know who Bo Jackson is? So a couple people just are like. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, okay. So I go and I ask one gentleman, he's really nice to meet, he's talking, got a little cocktail, and he's like, yeah, I thought I said I'm going over there. So I'm looking, all this time, at least 20 minutes. But I'm drinking cocktails and eating snacks, so I'm fine. <laughs> so I'm going around, I come back to him, and he's with a group of people. And I said, can you tell me what he has on or something? And then the other guy who happened to be, oh my God, he's like in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> so he's married to the girl in SWV. See, you guys won't know who SWV is, because it's like a book. Oh, okay, so Reggie, Eddie, Eddie, George. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> See? Okay, well, I know he's married to one of my favorite singing group people. So anyway, he's standing there, and he's like, who are you looking for, honey? And I'm thinking, like, no, you, you're nobody, I'm nobody. I'm taking pictures of all these people and sending it to my brother. So he's like, hey, bro, do you know who you're standing by? And I'm like, no. He's like, that's Eddie George. And I'm like, from, like, is it our dad's friend? I have to help him. Well, come to find out, the goofball that sent me on the wild goose chase was Bo Jackson. <laughs> so it gets better. Fast and Furious, this was about mm, 2000, maybe 12. We're Fast and Furious friends till this day because he was like, never in his life had he encountered a person that just did not know who he was. <laughs> I, but then he said, Are you coming to my golf alley? No, it was 2000, probably about 9 or 10. I know because my bank account was very much showing why I had not registered for his golf outing. Because he was like, are you coming to the golf outing tomorrow? And I was like, I tried, it was all sold out, which I waited until I got to Chicago <laughs> because it started at like $18 billion now. <laughs> I got a whole baby at home, like a human. I have to keep alive, I can't do this right now. <laughs> so he's like, be my guest tomorrow. He's like, show up to the Pro-Am shop and they'll give you an outfit when I tell you the next day. I went, I got, <laughs> <laughs> golf clothes are so cute. I was all in pink and white. I was at a golf cart to check it out. At the golf, at each hole, the holy things, there was a station. You could get a massage. You could get a haircut. It was a dominoes. It was every, so I rode the golf cart all day because I'm not playing golf in the, oh, and I hate hot weather. I'm not playing golf. I'm not getting out of the golf cart. So I rode around all day until it's time to do my cooking demo. And then, yeah, that's my budget. <laughs> so that's how I approach sports. So anyway, back to Emily. I get back. I'm like, okay, white Baker Mayfield, my black one. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> and so I get there, and they're talking about you know their nutrition goals and what they eat versus what they like to eat, and just very down to earth, very warm. Baker and, I, Baker and I are the girl and boy versions of each other. We drive Emily nuts. Like, we are always acting a fool and doing things we have no business. Like one day she came home and I had built an entire s'more station in the kitchen. And that's what we did for dinner. <laughs> Baker's my spirit animal. And if he can have sweets instead of, but he had given me the clean day. So it's like, let's get dirty. And we had chocolate graham crackers. <laughs> so we got there.
there, my first question is with my athletes, as it'll be with any of you that would contact me for health and wellness, and I, my first question is always, how are you pooping? <laughs> now, if you guys are Cleveland Indians fans, imagine me breaking that one on Corey Kluber. <laughs> Corey is exactly what you see, what you get, one of the nicest people I have worked for in my entire life. So I ask him this, along with Baker. Baker starts cracking up, and he's like, often as possible. He's like, matter of fact, in about the next 10 minutes, I'm like, well, hold on. <laughs> We're going to get to that. So I asked him for this, and he's like, yeah, you know, 10 minutes. I'm on. I'm like, okay. I'm like, does Emily lose eyelashes if she comes in there right after me? And she's like, oh, my God, yes. Can you fix that? <laughs> Absolutely. So let's say that's what I spent the first part of the season fixing. Um, Baker's train smoke, as we affectionately call it, <laughs> with a lot of vegan food, a lot of vegetables, a lot of just as long as you get out what you put in, you can have your occasional donuts, but you got to mix it up some. And that's what I always tell any health and wellness. Don't try. We can't be perfect. Like beginning of the year, you know how we all at the gym and not off. Because I'm going to tell you, what's today? The 16th? Mm -hmm. So my gym membership renewed on the 5th. I went on the 2nd. And I'm going to go tomorrow. <laughs> because it's real life. Like things, when I get home, my feet are smoking. The last thing I'm about to do is go get next to a 22 year old on, the, on the, the treadmill that is running 500 miles an hour wearing a tube top and some little biking shorts. And I just want to be like, girl, <laughs> are you serious? Like, I'm tired when I walk up the two flights of steps to LA Fitness to get to the equipment. Where is the elevator? <laughs> and so, what I do. And sometimes, I'm telling you, I, I will be transparent. I will get there and I'm already, and then like it's where Trader Joe's is in Westlake, so sometimes you have to go up the parking garage. If I'm up five floors and I walk down those steps, when I get into the gym, I'm getting into the sauna. I can't make it up the other steps. I can't, but I'm not gonna do it. So I sit in the sauna and I, I manifest the pounds melting off. No. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. So again, said all that to say that, honestly, we fall off sometimes, but you can't work out all the time and not have proper nutrition. You can lose weight with food and not work out. I'm not encouraging you to do that, so don't follow my direction. I like to blame mine on ethnicity and be like, I'm supposed to have all this stuff. <laughs> yes. So see, you guys know. But you, you can still enjoy things if you have a healthy balance of food eat some vegetables or drink them. I am a, I am a, the pickiest chef, like probably for my eating. I love sweets. <laughs> it's a Dunkin' Donut when you turn in, right by the freeway, it's like McDonald's and Dunkin', everybody's talking about oh, yeah. So they're not my choice because they bring theirs in frozen and fallen out, yeah. as you guys would see. I know donuts. I like Strongsville on Pearl Road, it's called Donut Scene and they stay open 24 hours, not that I ever went there in the middle of the night. <laughs> but I walked in there and the lights from heaven shone upon the counter. <laughs> <laughs> Duck Donuts. Who? Duck Donuts. Where is that? Harvard and Pinecrest, that new shopping area. Oh, up in there? It's up in there? They're hot donuts served to order. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is really Louise. So like, we will go on a ride. This is the Krispy Kremes commercial break. She asked me for a dozen of Krispy Kremes for her birthday. She didn't want anything else but a dozen of hot Krispy Kremes. That's you too? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, nothing. We are some sweet, loving families. But again, if you have a healthy mix, you can still enjoy stuff. I just feel like today, we grew up, especially in this room, we grew up on all these things. Real sugar, butter, we ate Hostess. Oh my goodness, have you guys had a hostess lately? Oh. So the cherry pie is my favorite. Of course, it's the most disgusting. So you break off the hard corner. Remember that pointy corner? Because it's shaped like a moon. And then you dip it in the gel. And then maybe get a cherry, but it's gel. So I did that recently. Well, first of all, let me back it up. Somebody took the hostess cherry pie and made them into 100 calorie snacks. 
So this is me, just like sports. I'm like, oh my God, a box of pies. So I just have a box of cherry pies. I go home and I take the pie out. It wasn't even this big, it was like this. And I am disgusted. <laughs> I am disgusted. Then I read the box further and it said 100 calories. Well listen, if I'm eating a hostess pie with all this unidentifiable stuff in here, I want every calorie, I want every preservative, I want that white glaze, I want that fake gel, I want it. I bust it open because I'm like, okay, I'll eat the box because it's only six. <laughs> 600 calories I'm running, that's dinner. And it was dry as a Sahara. I know, that's what I said. <laughs> but me, because I don't give up, you can tell that by my bio. I'm not satisfied with anybody just giving me anything or telling me anything. So I threw those in the trash and I drove to Walmart in Strongsville because they have them right by the carryout, by the checkout. They sit on a hostess stand right by the chickens that I would never buy. But, and I got a cherry pie. And so when I got back home, all the way down by the Metro Park, I bust that pie open and there was my goo. And I was so happy and I, I was in the bed. You know how when you get that one good snack, you get in the bed. Because, I mean, after I eat this, I'm gonna sit down on the nightstand, hit that light and I'm gone. I don't care what does my teeth, I'm not gonna my teeth. <laughs> It tasted like hair grease, like Vaseline. Oh. So then I figured maybe I got a bad one, so the next day I got another one. <laughs> because you have to be sure. And then I got a ho-ho and a, uh, a cupcake. And all the cream, it's different. It's not, all my childhood is ruined. So now I just have to make my own stuff at home. Or if you go to the bakery section, then you just buy like a half a pie and a half a gallon. Nobody else does that. Uh, I know one person that does. Megan, thank you. <laughs> Everybody in here trying to be on a diet. So anyway, yeah, you can still enjoy these treats. Don't follow any of my examples when it comes to sweets, because I just, that's how I grew up. <laughs> but having a healthy balance, keep enjoying life. Don't just cut out everything. Like now, everybody's got to eat kale. We drink in, everything is green. Like what happened to blue juice? You didn't even have a name. Now it's affectionately blue raspberry. What happened to just blue juice? Not like Kool-Aid. <laughs> like, you know, and if you ever had Kool-Aid at like one of your black friends' homes, and we don't measure much like this, <laughs> the sugar, no. We just do it and the color, the flavor is red. It's never cherry. So I make red Kool-Aid with like this much sugar and the picture is only this big. This is some things you just never forget. Okay. Yes, ma'am. My grandfather is 87 years old mm -hmm. and he still um, is active. And he right now does not eat meat very much. So will I be able to make this without using the meat? Absolutely. And you can add more vegetables to it too, because something like raw broccoli, if it doesn't make him um, train smoke, or <laughs> cauliflower, or something like that, the snow peas. Mm -hmm. And these ladies are so festive for parties. Like you knock out a spread like this, and people will be like, oh my goodness, where's Beth been? <laughs> they just came over here Christmas, and it wasn't like this. And now I'm here on Easter, and oh my goodness, look at this. So yeah. Like you have a question, Dave? No, no, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> well, who else are you cooking for right now? Right now, I'm on a mini vacation. Oh, that's I'm so glad you just led me into my next conversation. So I'm on a mini vacation because if you hadn't figured it out, I have like 2,042 jobs. So I told somebody that I wasn't going to work until Baker came back, which I'm not really. I'm doing like here and there. I have to do Ronald McDonald House because that's like my second nature or whatever. But I'm chilling. I am chilling. I had a Cleveland Indian that contacted me. As I think I was telling you guys earlier and I got sidetracked, but um, they were ready to start now. I, I don't want to. We'll talk about the sandwiches. Which sandwiches? The sandwiches that you just put in here. The little white bread sandwiches. Yeah, think about it. <laughs> the white bread sandwiches that I put on where? On Instagram? Instagram? Oh. You know I post and don't ever look at that again. Okay, what day was it? Was it recently? Just recently, yeah. Because <coughs> I, I, it wasn't even during like when the homeless, when you see the homeless. Oh, How do you want to tell okay. them? We'll talk about the homeless in yeah. a second. So we, I do sandwiches. I like to do chef-inspired meals. The homeless, my group, have gotten so spoiled. Not only when I pull up, they're like, chef's here. <laughs> what are you doing? They just start running out any, from everywhere. 
like, what are we eating today? And then sometimes Dominion will give me these large donations. So they do it twice a year. Whenever they have that, they might get crab legs or, you know, a party or something like that. Yeah, I could, because for one thing, I deal mostly with the men. And it's got to be very disheartening as a grown man not to be able to provide for yourself. And then I don't want people feeling like, okay, you're homeless. Let me get you a bologna sandwich with no, you know, nothing on it. Like, I don't do that. So if I'm going to give it to Kyrie, can't work for Kyrie forever. I'm going to give it to him. That's how I feed the less fortunate. And I like to call them the residentially challenged <laughs> instead of homeless. Because homeless sounds so desolate, you know, and so, like, that's just the current situation. It's not where you're going to be forever. But how many of you, now don't say it because I'm staring directly at you, but how many of you would like to see me again? She did not raise her hand. <laughs> so I'm actually having an event. I'm going to have you guys take one and pass it around. I did want it to get lost in translation. Thank you. You still feel mad about that email you sent me, aren't you? No. <laughs> so I'm having an event called Not Pucks Type on February 15th, and it's going to be in the Waterloo Arts District on Waterloo, right off the freeway. Okay. Now, if any of you are thinking like, "Oh my God, that's far," no. <laughs> I drove all the way here for you today. <laughs> you can do the same for me. So let me tell you a little bit about this. I am being 50 years old and a meniscus surgery behind me and some other stuff going on, I'm tired. And so I'm trying to transition into something that will still allow me to cook, but allow me to still do something different. I'm always outside the box. I always like to do things that people haven't seen. So there's a photographer who came out right around the time of Gordon Parks. Her name is Carrie Mae Weems, if anyone has ever heard of her. And she had a series of photographs called Not Manet's Type. Manet the artist? Okay, so these five pictures are of an African-American woman, their boudoir scenes, nothing racy, but just very beautiful pictures, and each one has a caption of why that particular woman would not be the type for a Picasso, a Duchamp, a Van Gogh, and it explains that in such a creative way. So I am having a young photographer recreate these pictures in a 2020 version for the art exhibit part of this. On the other side of the room, I am taking on five of Wolfgang Puck's most famous dishes, and I'm gonna kill the myth of soul food being an unhealthy, horrible thing that you can't eat. So I'm gonna do a healthy version, and then I'm gonna break it down one more time, and I'm gonna do a vegan version of these five dishes. So that's why it's called Not Puck's Type, and I'm gonna explain to the audience, for one thing, when I have events, I like for them to be conversations, which is why I might make a joke and talk about, you know, the black childhood and the Kool-Aid and stuff like that, because I think that a lot of times we have misconceptions of each other because we just don't feel comfortable asking the questions. I like to ask the questions and I love to answer them, so any event that I have is going to be for conversation, for learning, for development, and for social growth, because we really need that, because the world is, can be divided sometimes. Yeah? Okay. So that'll be that type of event. So it's not a black history event, because I don't believe in that, because we all history. It's Polish, Irish, Armenian. We all have a part in this country that we all love, no matter what's going on right now. So that is what I'm using that platform for, and that you can have some great food, because yeah, you get to taste all of these things. And then my girl from Cleveland Urban Winery is doing wine pairings with each meal, and then there'll be other free wine and beer, and you can just come and get loaded, have food, enjoy, <laughs> and yeah. So if you're interested, um, everything's on Eventbrite, and I would love to see some of you there, because it is going to be epic. It's the first thing of that type that's ever been done, and I'm excited. And I'm pretty proud of it. And I usually don't give myself a minute to toot my own horn. Then the second one that will be coming up right after that is going to be called Sneaking in the Living Room. And so if you missed the first one, which don't you dare. But this one, how many of you had that room in your house or grandma's house that you weren't allowed to go in? It was either covered in plastic. It was all white. It didn't have a TV in there. And when your mother wasn't home, you would just go in there. I'd in the parking lot. I didn't do it, but your son did it. <laughs> so, in this head, I'm going to rent a large warehouse space, and I'm going to 
get that vintage furniture from each of those will be an Asian one, a Jewish one, an African American one, all these different living rooms. There'll be trivia, there'll be food, meals from that time. And then what I'm looking for, which I don't know, my head has a lot of ideas, is like a person, I'd like an elderly person or an older person, mature person, knowledgeable, okay. <laughs> to kind of sit in that living room to answer questions. Because one thing that ties us all together is that we all have that room. But when I'm talking to people about it, a lot of people are like, really, y'all had that? I'm like, girl, did we? I'm <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. like, <laughs> Or you go in that one room that your grandma had with a plastic couch and you stick on it in the summer, and you all like, scrap. <laughs> Everybody's had that. So that would be like the second production. And then there'll all be culinary art exhibits like that to follow. So check my website, which I think you guys have the info for it. It's on the recipe card. Yeah, and you can always ask me questions. I always answer within 24 hours, even if I have to tell you, hey, I'm traveling, but I just wanted to let you know I see you, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But health and wellness questions are fine. You can book me for stuff. I do a blog on there. I use healthy recipes on there. You can see what's coming up next. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Any questions? Didn't you just say you were taking a break? <laughs> that is my break. <laughs> so, <laughs> let me explain to you what a break is. So, the break is when I'm not actively working for like 13 people in one day. Because that's my usual. Like, I love for basketball to roll into football to roll into baseball, and then I will work 365 days, and I will be coming. Oh, I also work for out-of-state teams, too. So I fly out and service, you know, some of the guys, and caught many a red eye on Christmas morning to her house to fall asleep on the back stairs because I just I can't make it any further. So I am. I'm on a break, for real. Like, I've been sleeping in my own bed for, like, more than – six hours for like a week straight. Like it's, it's going well. Yes. <laughs> this might be kind of silly, but have you ever worked for or cooked for like LeBron James? Okay, so <laughs> Gloria is my client, his mom. Okay. And Gloria is amazing actually. So I got the well, it's public info. I got the rehab of Gloria who is beautiful and generous. Now I would say this when you see all the things that LeBron does, like the community and stuff and all this charity, it's real. His mother is that person. I'm so glad that she you know, was able to get herself back on track because it's been such a lovely journey. Now, fast forward to LeBron. LeBron has a chef named Dina. Dina's lovely. And Dina was going out of the country right when, I don't know, did LeBron hurt himself or something on the Lakers? Yeah. Okay, so whenever that happened, and LeBron was shooting a movie, and so he was coming back and forth, and Dina wanted to go out of town. And so I found myself on a phone call, like, hey, you know, while Dina's gone, would you like to take all of us? And I was thinking, like, first of all, <laughs> no, because of Savannah, Zuri, who is like five people, um, the two boys, then LeBron, and then all of their house guests who are all over the universe all the time. And then I just was like, no, no. <laughs> and then, right, so then they call back again, because even Gloria, when she first asked me to be her chef, and I was like, no. And she's like, are you booked? And I'm not, I'm, I'm a very direct person. And I said, no, I'm not booked. And she's like, oh, well, I don't, I don't want to. I don't know how to say that in a nice way. I don't want to, I'm tired, and I just don't feel like it. And she called me for a week, and the last day she was like, girlfriend, I don't know why you're holding out, like I won't stop calling you, so can you please start? And then that kind of won me over because I love people who are back like me. So, but yeah, but with the LeBron thing, I just thought I said, and then you can't work for other people. So I am a personal chef. A private chef would be like for an Oprah. Like that's the only person you can work for. And for me, I figure if I made your breakfast and then I'm done until lunch, you know how much money I can make between breakfast and lunch, one for five other people. And so I never thought of just being like one person chef. And then athletes are fickle. Like when I first got into the business, they would come back at the beginning of the next season and be like, oh, I'm microbiotic now, so we're going to get a different chef. Or I'm vegan now. This was in the very beginning, so I'm still watching MTV Cribs. Like, 
but I entered the crib your refrigerator. Like, how can you let me go? I have no backup plan. And then I started being like, oh, forget this. First come, first serve, leave a deposit before your season ends. Um, I'm working for 20 people if I can. And so one goal is by, and I'd like to fire my clients. I will let you go. Perfect case is Kyrie. Because I'm off my NDA, so I can tell you all the stuff. No. So I worked for Kyrie for five years. And I just felt that um, sometimes it's time. You know, you ever been on a job too long and then you're trying to figure out, like, okay, did I see my grandmother or pastor? <laughs> and then I'm like, you got two grandmothers and two grandfathers, which is totally fine to use them if they're already deceased. Don't do that and put bad juju on them if they're not. I have never gone. So, I've been thinking of excuses not to go. I just don't like a lot of bad energy. I like everything to go smoothly. And I figure, like, I did all this stuff to have my own business. I don't want to go somewhere and be miserable. I might as well be in corporate America if I'm going to be unhappy and have high blood pressure. I'm not going to do it at Peanut's house. Yeah, call him Peanut. So, yeah, I like to um, I like to have that freedom to let my clients go. So I parted ways with Peanut, and then I parted ways with, no, I don't know if I'm off the NDA. Y'all can't know that. Ask me next year. <laughs> so for the most part, it's all been a lovely experience. Yes, sir? How is it that you, who have no interest in sports, became involved with that? Let me tell you, that's my favorite part. We were talking about that before you got here because I am 100% woman and I get to watch the stretching. I get to go in the <laughs> locker room. <'cause> I, <laughs> I am in the homes when they wake up in the morning and they just may or may not feel like a bathroom. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> job perk though that is what keeps me getting up in the morning but um, when I first really took it seriously like after getting replaced a couple times I started studying on my own um, sports nutrition and like their basic injuries and how like feeding different foods um, nightshades and berries and things like that would help with inflammation turmeric and all that type of stuff so then it became like more people were coming out of the woodwork like, oh, I'm gonna work for athletes. And I just, me, I'm always, I just always wanna be different. And when I started doing all of these different herbal remedies and things and started seeing these results, then I got addicted to it. And I was like, oh, I'm not working for anybody else except professional athletes. And it was hilarious because mom, do you remember when I came in the house and actually said that? And you were like, <laughs> she's like, do you know so? <laughs> And I was like, no, no, I don't. But that's how I do everything. And so I'll take the most impossible situation, and I'm going to, if I decide to do it, I'm doing it. That's why I have to be very careful with the things. I don't know if any of you like think about manifestation, how thoughts become things. I am very much that person. Like, with my work, like my brother had the nerve to say after I was doing like the work at NASA, he's like, oh, my sister is going to be the first chef in space. I said, no, hold up, because I did watch the space shuttle with Chris McAuliffe, and I'm not, I'm not going any higher than that. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. But I, I decided to do the athletes. I didn't know anybody. I only knew people who liked sports. Nobody was hanging with them or anywhere, so I started doing my homework. So the way I got my first client is there used to be a place called The View that was over Mr. Albert's downtown. And that's where all the athletes went after the game. So I was using my rent money, and mind you, I had that human at this time. I'm using my rent money to get into the club, to get into VIP, to buy a bottle, so that when I asked my brother, like, hey, who's this person? Is this a good person? And he'd be like, yeah, hey, like super sleep, because he's like a, works at, I don't know, zero o'clock in the morning. And I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna buy them a bottle and go like, hey, I'm Chef April, I can cook for you after this. And they'd be like, oh my God, you have a restaurant? And mind you, I'm not dressed like this, like I'm dressing club clothes. So I'm younger, let's go back. <laughs> younger, everything off, you know. So, <laughs> they're like, yeah, they don't even know why they just hired me. Like, yeah, so West 117th has a giant eagle that's open 24 hours a day. I would go there, get the food, and then drive to Westlake, Avon, wherever, make their meals. Now the only downside to that is that I still worked every day and I was working for Peter Rubin at the Coral Company. If anybody is familiar with Peter Rubin, yes. baby, Peter is a genius businessman. He taught me so much and I will be forever grateful for the lessons that I learned with him. But he is not nice. 
and you will not be late to work, and you will not come in there sleepy because you've been cooking all night for some athletes because he don't care. That's the one that taught me, like, if your aunt passes away, it's a direct thing he said, if your aunt passes away, she's still going to be dead after you finish this project. <laughs> <laughs> and at first I was offended, and then I started using it. And that's why the students hate me. Yeah. <laughs> she knows. Okay. So, yeah, so then it caught on. But then, it was during a time, like you think about when I got out of school, there was no African American chefs, not a lot of females. So I didn't, re I didn't have a food network, and I didn't have any examples to follow. So that was the best way I knew how, but then it caught on word of mouth. And when I tell you, I never had to go to another job again to work for anybody, and it's been 20 years, this past October 22nd, I never worked for anyone else. And people always say, well, how did you get into that? How did you get an athlete and you hate sports? Because I decided to. I can do anything that I set my mind to. That's why I didn't want to start thinking about space before it manifests. And I'm like, hey, we know you did these gourmet meals with the astronauts. You want to go on the Absolutely not. She's not doing that. <laughs> so, anybody else? Yes, Megan? When you first started, how old were you? How old was I? Mm -hmm. Thirty. <sighs> Anybody else remember thirty? <laughs> I was, oh, oh. <laughs> so yeah, add scallions. Okay, the end. <laughs> you know why? Because they were looking. You notice how short they are. When I took them out, they were all like, "Oh, I don't want to be here." And I'm just like, "What's wrong with you?" And so I cut them, and then I had nowhere to wash them. So you see how I didn't contaminate you? I got you. So, but use scallions. It's on your paper. I am the worst instructor ever, right? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I was 30. And, yeah. Oh, your food was very delicious and thank you. Well, thank you, Matt. I love her. Thank you. <laughs> How about you? I would love a question from you because you've been listening so intently. I feel like we just have bonded. Well, I, I just think you're great. Oh, well, thank and you. Personality and PR. wise. Thank you so much. So I'll so, see you at my event in February. Did did you maybe? All right. Now. Did did you cook at all? Did your mom let you cook at home? <laughs> oh, no, <not>, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, ma'am. This is a one woman show. <laughs> so no, let me tell you why though. When people ask, like my daddy, Lord rest his soul. Hi dad. Um, I, he used to call me Bruno, because I used to say I was Bruno the butcher. I was the main chef. And so he called me Bruno for my entire life. But let me tell you why. No, I didn't cook at home. But let me tell you why. Because down south, Sally right here, <laughs> every single day, like, you know how like a kid can get up and you can have some nice cereal or something? If we have cold cereal, it looked like the whole commercial. You gotta have toast, some juice, a whole nother glass of milk. You can't just have some fruit loops. So we're eating, now mind you, nobody else is eating like this. We're eating grits. Cheese eggs, toast, biscuits, pancakes, French toast, like the, every morning. Put it up. Let me just be like, for once, I just want to go to school hungry. Then she would pack our lunches. Like, I'm breaking out chicken salads, paninis. Like, this is back in, like, I was born in 1902. Like, this is back then. <laughs> you got a full dinner waiting. Like, if you got an afternoon snack, it's about to be like a tuna sandwich or something. Like, <laughs> so it was never, so I didn't have, I couldn't cook at home. I used to make onion rings in the middle of the night for me and my dad. Onion rings with ketchup and mustard, and we would order Pizza Hut. When I got older, though, because I think I had my first fast food when I was like 13. I don't know. <laughs> Age life was hard. So, yeah, but you know what? I always say that food was such an expression of love because when I think about it, like my parents owned a company. And my mom worked all day, right with my dad. She ran out the, out, uh, the office, and my dad had a trucking company, and so he would be driving. And then to still come home, and you walk up the driveway, don't get the big head, and you smell like fresh laundry. And so you knew all your clothes were clean. You knew the house would be spotless. She ran my dad's bath water. She ironed his work clothes. But then I used to be like, oh, my God, Mom, like, blink, blink three times if you need to be rescued. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I grew up. I was like, wow, how much she loved us. Like, to do all of it so much. And so then I started doing it for my daughter, who, you know, is a 90s kid. She was like, oh my God, mom, I'm not 
eating all this in the morning. I can't even process this. It's like, my mother would have knocked me to stop the cold. And she'd be out the door, and I'd have like everything cooked, and I'd be like, all right, we'll see you later. But I still, that's how I treat my clients too, which I think has made me so successful because, like, they have to trust you. You have to be clean, which is real like hygiene freaks. So I always like people say, you wear nail polish. I do. And I get my nails done like every four days because I don't ever want you to see my hands touching your stuff. If I don't have my gloves and you're just like, ugh, I don't ever want my eyelashes to be out here doing this. <laughs> or you, yeah, you ladies know how you can get a server sometimes and they come to your table and she's like, can I help you? Like, no. <laughs> I can't because your eyelash just touched me. <laughs> Always like that type of environment though and, and even like when it rained we had picnics but everything was like around food and everything was always magic and we even like made the cookies for Santa and you know we just had that kind of childhood growing up so it was an easy thing for me to transition into being that type and that's why I love being a personal chef instead of a restaurant because I would imagine I would get sued if I like hugged my you go to a restaurant, I'm like, hi, are you pooping? They might frown upon that, so. That's why I do what I do. You feel proud of yourself, girl? <laughs> Conversations and like, let me make you comfortable, Corey, because anytime he's just very stoic and very handsome in his business, they're like, hey, here, here's my Amex. And I'll be like, woo, I'm about to buy a dress. And then he doesn't laugh. I'm just, I'm <laughs> 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 don't get my background checked. And so this one day I go and it's pouring down raining. And I just cut my hair last May, so I had a bun in my hair for like, oh my God, maybe five years. And I just got sick of it and cut my hair off again. Now I wish I didn't, but anyway. So I had this bun, my bun's up, and it is pouring down raining. So this was a drop off day, and I'm just taking him and his wife and the kids' food, and I'm at the door, and so Corey's like, hey, April, let me get you an umbrella. The only athlete I've ever had in 20 years that calls me April. <laughs> April, the whole government. So he's like, April, let me get you an umbrella. And I was like, no, Corey, I'm good. And then he's like, mm. No, it's really raining. I'm like, hold on, it'll take me a second. I said, Corey, I'm fine. Like, I'm already drenched. I don't know what the big deal is. So then he says it one more time. I said, oh, Corey. I'm like, I know. This is my real hair. Nothing's going to happen. And he started laughing hysterically. He turns red. He's like, oh, my God, I didn't mean that. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I'm like, but your chef has real hair. He's like, oh, my God, you're insane. And then he went right back to Corey. <laughs> It just was all red. <laughs> and so his wife just fell out. <laughs> and she was like, tell her how you're pooping. <laughs> and he was fine. He ate like, he had those different days. Bull, bull pin. Yeah. Okay. I was about to say bull pit. Bull pin, pitching, post pitching, all these days. He'd be like, I need smart cards. And I'd be like, I posted the stupid ones. Like, and he'd just be like, <laughs> I hate being in the house with you by myself. I just put my earbuds in, like, I'm not talking to you, Corey. <laughs> but yeah, he um he ate for those days particularly and it was it was just a pleasure. But then his wife, first of all, he's super generous and he could call me right now and I'd leave you. <laughs> but super generous and just super accommodating, but his wife always had the fancy dinner parties. And so I met the Kubers. Oh my goodness. Okay, last story. I know I said last story, but I lied. So do you remember Nick and Joanna Swisher? Okay. So I remembered her. See, I'm glad you said no. Girl. Yeah. It might be cultural. So I knew Joanna Swisher because she was um, Reba's daughter on Reba. Yeah. Yeah. So when I walked in the house, now I didn't know. I didn't know what Nick was. Again. All the black girls love them. So I'm like, Nick must be fine. But I'm not gonna go in here. Not knowing. So then when little <coughs> Joanna came to the door, I'm like, ah, oh, you're not going to get me because you have a white wife, the athlete. So I come on in. You guys can laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> I come on in. I'm looking around. Boom, marriage picture. White, baby. So there you go.
ready to go. Nothing tan, you know. <laughs> Nick Swisher's white, I'm going to the kitchen, I'm ready. So I cook for them, she's like, you are amazing, I love you, here's a check. Boom, we're gonna pay you for two months, you start on Monday. Um, only thing I ask of you is let us know if you ever need anything, like don't have your car broken down or anything. Like, Oh, my car be broken, but anyway, she was just <laughs> nice, and she was like, let us know, we have like five cars, you can always use, you can use our pool, just blah, 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 blah. When I woke up the next morning, he had been traded. And I had to talk to the Lord, because I love the Lord, but I kept saying like, some days, do you think you're funny? <laughs> so I called her and I was like, hey, heard the news, you know, congratulations on the 11th wedding room. So they will be returning these checks. And she was like, absolutely not. Go ahead and keep those. And we're going to use you whenever, you know, we can, blah, blah, blah. And you're welcome to come if you want to, but I couldn't because I had other clients. But yeah, she let me keep two months of pay. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> so fast forward to Corey Cooper calling me. I was on my way out of town because I worked for Donald Penn when he was on the Oakland Raiders. See, once you write me a check, I know where you play. <laughs> so I was heading to Target because you know you always get that travel back from Target because I'm not paying twenty five dollars to check anything. So my whole life is gonna go right in there. So I'm driving up the street and Corey calls, but again I don't know what a Corey Cooper is. So he calls and he's like something. My phone's going in now. He said like, something, something, something. Corey and I'm like, oh. Really? I meet him was cute and he's still talking and I was like who is this and he's like some something, something Corey Cooper Cleveland Indians and I said oh you want April hold on let me get her <laughs> <laughs> so I put it on view and I'm like girl get yourself together <laughs> and then I, I go back and I said hi this is April how can I help you because before I was answering I'm like hello <laughs> Joanna Swisher's house two years ago and when I told her this year that we could get a chef she had your card mm -hmm. two years wow. manifestation <laughs> because right before that was when I quit Kyrie and that was like a wing and a prayer Kyrie is my security blanket if you just want to be honest where I could just work for Kyrie I have to do nothing else I would have been here I would have been doing nothing just floating in the floating in the pool just like y'all <laughs> just like them and when I did that, I knew for me, for my mental health, and not that it was just a bad situation, it just was, it was time. Five years, it was just time. And so, when my bank account kept texting me like, girl, where is our deposit that we get? Where's our summer money? Because he always called, he called me Shorty. He's like, hey, Pina, hey, Shorty, you good? I'm gonna send you money. Like, I don't want you working this summer, you need to take a break. And I was like, no, Pina, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not, but yeah. So I was just like, oh my goodness, like, I think I have to like figure this out, but I want a Cleveland Indians client. I need a Cleveland Indians client, and that I'm not going to stop until I get one. And I'm just going to wait. I'm going to trust the universe. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to pray for it. I'm going to let it go. And then Michael Brantley's wife called me. I know who you are. And then Austin Jackson, Jackson's wife called me. I didn't know who they were. And I had them all for one season. And then Carlos Santana came this past season. And I would love to work for Carlos again as soon as he gets a divorce. <laughs> Brittany was challenging. <laughs> I love Carlos because when I go in in the morning, you know, I'm always in a good mood. I'm kind of always like this because I have an obligation to be happy when I'm making people's food. And he'd be like, good morning, April. Get, 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 go for the, and I'd be like, hey, Carlos. And he'd be like, da, 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 da. sausage. <laughs> and I'd be like, I can tell you to save my kid what Carlos has ever said to me. <laughs> but it sounds so good. <laughs> and then one day he said, ah, oh, you smell so good. And all I know, I was like, Carlos and Tennis said, I smell good. <laughs> but yeah, that's the end of my adventure. So you guys need to go home and say, like, Dave, you got a question? Because it looks like it. You sure? All right. He's got knife on me. He's got knife on me. Do you want to touch my blade, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you touch my blade, Dave. <laughs> Just don't steal it. Guys, thank you so much.